Welcome back. I am Kedita Zalashvili. This is Queen's Festival and we are having the weekend of European and American speakers and the tournaments. In the end of this week, week uh, there will be a chess competition as well where the players will compete each other and will fight for the final tournament. But before that, we have very, very interesting topics today and we have two speakers today and I'm glad to introduce to you a uh, woman grandmaster Regina Tais Pokorna uh, who will uh, talk with us about time management which is very important topic for 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 many especially from chess players and also Alexandra Bosik um, female chess player who will talk about the topic how to boost women in chess Hello, hello. How how are you feeling today? Are you ready to share all the knowledge and experience with us? Hi, Katie. Uh, happy to be here yeah, and to be part of such a wonderful event. That's amazing. Our first topic is time management. I can't wait to hear all about this topic <laughs> because this is, as I mentioned earlier, one of the important topics for all the chess players at any level. Shall we start? Yes, yeah, sure, we can start. And um, I would like to give a little bit background how uh, I came actually to this work because it's just not like I have nothing to do. But it was two years ago, we had the woman training camp in Austria and our uh, former national coach asked us to prepare a topic that would like to present. Mm -hmm. And I thought, OK, like what it should be. I thought, OK, why not time management? Because me, myself, I've been playing really little in the last few years because of the job, because of the family and, you know, with little praxis, then you always come into time travel. And the mm -hmm. second uh, the second point was that my uh, team colleagues in Austria, I noticed that the girls, they are coming to time travel very often. And I thought, OK, maybe that's something that they would like to hear or maybe um, some good points, you know, to present them and they could take them for and implement in their game. So basically, this is the background. And when I started to search for the information, I thought, okay, you know, you, what you do the first thing to go to Google and just search. But I was very surprised to see that they are actually, there has been very little done on uh, this time management in chess. And uh, I was a little bit uh, surprised, horrified at what I'm going to do, you know, uh, if there is no material. And then I grabbed the book from the Gary Kasparov, Have Life Imitate Chess. And I was hoping to, to get some interesting stories, something that I could copy. But actually, it wasn't the case, but I got some kind of motivation and uh, inspiration what I would do. And, uh, you know, if you go to school, university, then it's like uh, you remember the things that are really uh, connected with your experience, with the praxis, not the, you know, the theoretical that you go out of the room and you just forget the moment. So I thought, OK, I will ask a few friends of mine, uh, grandmasters, how do they deal with the time management? You know, mm -hmm. what are they doing using special techniques? And I purposely chose the guys that they are like mastering time management very well. But the guys who I know that they are coming in a uh, tight note over and over again, and maybe they will share with us their, their the best practice. And uh, so I did a small survey, like with the 10 questions, and I was very happy to give uh, to get the really good answers. And it's not uh, about just the time management, but I will be also presenting some very useful uh, uh, general general tips for, for the chess. Amazing, amazing. For our viewers who are watching right now on YouTube channel, uh, if you have any uh, questions, please uh, write to us and I will, I will bring that to our speakers. All right, let's start the presentation. Mm -hmm. Let's bring the presentation mm -hmm. on the screen. So we can move now to agenda. Mm -hmm. So we will speak about time management, why it is important to to really uh, to solve it if you have time problem now and not to postpone it. I will tell you something a little bit about the survey, learn from the best, it's the best advices, tips from the players. The one thing you will notice is that you won't see any names uh, after the quotations, after the advices, tips. It's just because, um, you know, we all have the tendency to like someone or uh, then we sur uh, then we lose this uh, objectivity and maybe players you don't like if you say like okay i think it's nonsense what she's saying or so basically i decided to, to leave to skip the names and you will just see the 
the text without the names. And at the end, it's a like summary, sum up, and Q and A if there are any. Mm -hmm. All so right, we can move. Mm -hmm. So my first, actually, as I said, I grabbed the book from Gary Kasparov, How Life Imitate Chess, and I thought, okay, why not to start something that is uh, that is maybe negative, but maybe it gives the the girl also some kind of uh, a boost or uh, to see that uh, okay, they are not the only ones who are struggling with this with this problem, and. Uh, to see that what are the consequences by the strong grandmaster. So I started the, with a quotation from the Gasparo, the time travel reduces us all to pure reflex and reaction, tactical play, emotion and easy cloud uh, our strategic vision when there is no time for proper evaluation. A game of chess can suddenly seem a lot like a game of chance. So mm -hmm. I asked today if guys, if they agree with these quotations and if they can name an example where this time factor ruined the, completely the game or in the first case, a uh, tournament. So let's have a look at their replies. So I can never forget my game against Morozevich to, from 2013 and uh, Instead of winning, uh, uh, I missed the combination win one minute on the clock. Next mm -hmm. guy was said the worst loss was uh, against Anna during the candidates, and it cost him a lot of money. The next guy said uh, Grandmaster uh, against one Slovenian GM. I spoiled my advantage in the first time, not, and then uh, still winning the position, I lost completely. And uh, I was present in this game, and I had to say this was a little, little personal chess strategy for the guy because it cost uh, his team the medal at the team championship. Uh, the next grandmaster said, "Okay, at the European Championship, um, instead of qualifying for the uh, World Championship, he was left at home because he lost a piece in the time travel." And uh, the last one was saying during the tournament Gibraltar, he played very poorly in the time trouble, and that's why his his result was very bad. Mm -hmm. so um, as may you I can add, see, may I add yes, my. Yes. Uh, my uh, <laughs> my experience as well. I've been um, uh, observing my games, and in uh, most of the games, I'm losing my games before 40 moves, before second uh, increment of the time. So I think mm -hmm. I also have this issue of time management. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have at some moment of our chess life, because you know, as in life, you have ups and downs. That's also in sport. It's not just about us, just players, hobby players, professional. It's all the sports, you know? And sometimes you even don't know why this comes. And even if you have a bad period, what we'll be speaking later about the, the reasons for time travels, then um, sometimes you just sit at the board and you don't know why you spend like 20, 30 minutes on, on a move. And, and this is like something that you really sometimes cannot influence, you know, this mm -hmm. bad period. Mm -hmm. But if All you right. see, if you can see, uh, sometimes for us, it's like, okay, we lose by um, most of us, like the hobby players, and we lose a bad game because of the time travel, or maybe uh, we spoil the result of our team. But in the of the professional guys, it goes about much more, you know, it's about the qualifications, a lot of money, and uh, also a reputation. Sometimes. Yes, yeah. indeed. Let's have our presentation back. Yeah, so let's move to the next slide, please. So it's about uh, the survey. So I uh, formulated 10 questions. So I got 100 answers for, from 10 grandmasters from seven different countries. And my goal was to get an insight on their time management skills, how they uh, master the struggle with one of the most important factors, learn from their experience, and get the best practice advice. Mm -hmm. We can move. Mm -hmm. So why we should take this uh, topic seriously now and not to postpone it? Because uh, chess clocks will accompany us. Um, yeah, it won't, we won't, it won't happen that we will play without a clock, right? So, and in the recent years, the chess became faster and faster and we, got, uh, we, we are getting less and less time. So um, I think time, the managing the time, it's, uh, it's equally or, it's also very important as your chess knowledge, because even if you manage to overplay your open and you get a very good position, but if you spend too much time and you get like 10 minutes for uh, uh, 10 moves for two minutes, it really doesn't then uh, help you these chess skills if you have very bad time management. 
So uh, for the players really struggling, take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and now I will introduce you exactly the, the players. I will just uh, probably you know all of them. Uh, Lukan Feli is a uh, grandmaster from the Netherlands. Cafeletto is from Brazilian. Um, Marcus Rag is the strongest German uh, speaking uh, grandmaster. David Cengelia is from Georgia, lives in Austria, and it's former woman uh, national coach. Uh, Fernando Peralta is former uh, number one in uh, Argentina. Sergei Tiviaco, I don't need to introduce um, well known. Sergei Mops is a very good friend of mine, uh, very fascinating guy. He's uh, from Armenia, but lives in Czech Republic. Now he's uh, coaching also uh, Slovak national team. Igor Stoli, Slovak uh, grandmaster, coaching women national team. Vinik Hrachev is also a very good friend of mine who uh, he's, uh, was former top 20 in the 90s uh, player and now coaching men national team. And Tigran Albandian, maybe it's not so known, he is a uh, former coach of the, uh, of the male uh, um, Armenian team, won two, two gold medals with him, and he was a former coach of uh, Kramnik. So I think the good guys, and um, so I think their advices uh, will be very useful for Armenian players. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's go to then another question, and that was about. Uh, how do they cope with the time pressure during the game and if they are using any special technique? So, uh, I write down the times. I think uh, many of us did it uh, when before the time increase, that we write down the times. But maybe it's also useful to do it uh, even now with the time increase, because, for example, my pupil, uh, when I see that she's spending too much time or she's getting into much time trouble, I always tell her oh, she should write down the time where she. Uh, spend the most because uh, then you can analyze if you have problems in the opening, if you have problems in the critical position or in, in the end game phase, and then you can come to root and uh, analyze your weaknesses. I concentrate on my own breathing and try, I trust my intuition. Intuition is a word that we'll be hearing today very often. Uh, I check number of moves left till the time control. I think most of us is doing the same. I don't spend large amounts of time of to find the perfect elusive solution. I think this is a problem with many of the players. We see a good move, but we are not satisfied. And we think, OK, there is a better move. There is this perfect move. And it costs us just too much, too much time. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. if you find a good move, just play it. Yeah. Don't search. Don't waste the time searching for this perfect, perfect solution. And you need to change your decision process in the time trouble. and. Um, I try to have a two minutes on the clock because that's true. Uh, with few seconds on the clock, a very silly move can come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at the, what are the reasons, the factors that cause most of the time uh, during the game. So it is missing self confidence. Okay, it's, uh, as I already mentioned, it is if you are having a like, bad period. Then um, we are very unsure, you know, we are double checking our moves, we are not trusting ourselves, and this costs us, of course, again, again, a uh, lot of time. Then it's a uh, lack of practice, and I would say it goes hand in hand with the self of confidence. It's, for example, my own problem because I've been playing so little, and uh, mm -hmm. it just, I don't, I'm not this uh, uh, tournament routine. Um, perfectionism, what we already mentioned, this elusive perfect solutions, trying to search again and again for a better move. Lack of concentration and energy. Um, we will be speaking about this uh, concentration a uh, few slides later. Mm -hmm. Insufficient opening preparations. If the, uh, if the opponent got us in the, in the um, preparations, or if we, uh, if we choose a variation, we want to surprise the opponent, but we ourselves got actually stuck because we are not so familiar with the opening. Um, complicated positions, uh, crucial, where are the, these uh, crucial positions? Tiredness and bad sleep, of course, is an external factor. It's when it's loud, when it's too hot, when it's cold. There are players that are super sensitive and it can actually affect also their play. Yeah, that's right. The, this last factor is very important for uh, for many chess players, I guess. Yeah, uh, yes, we are like uh, we are like. 
I think it's because we need to concentrate like fully and we are then uh, super, uh, super concentrated and all these little things that are annoying us, that it really disturb us, you know? Mm-hmm. And, but sometimes if you are really fully concentrated, I remember it was like 2006, the four we played like uh, Olympiad uh, Ma- Mallorca and my team played against um, Lithuania. And when I finished my game, I was just surprised to see there were no other games. I was so concentrated, you know, I was playing against um, Milita and I was so focused on my game that I completely forget everything uh, around me. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's like, it doesn't happen often, you know. Yeah, yeah most of the cases about this uh, uh, not concentration and bad sleep cups where there are some important tournaments in the hotel and next to the hotel there are some restrictions or buildings. Um, reconstruct or so on i have seen i have seen some players complain about that and they have bad sleep and then it's very hard for them to get all the energy back for the next round exactly i'm also very sensitive about sleep and that's why i started to sleep with the earplugs you know mm-hmm. and this really <laughs> this really helps me i have to say because it was i don't know i am also like all this little noise i always get disturbed and ah, bad. this is really annoying yeah <laughs> all right good to see you that i'm not only one in this <laughs> <laughs> all right shall we go to the next present yeah, uh, slide it. so my next question was if they train their time skills but they are not playing and i was surprised to see that basically no although also the players they are aware of their weakness but they are not doing anything about it or it's just uh, like all players or most players too practicing blitz, playing blitz, like doing the tactics and um, one player said okay he thought over his ideal time management he tried to stick to it mm-hmm. so we can move to the next questions so mm-hmm. What is important in the time travel? Is it uh, intuition? Is it uh, tactical knowledge? It is handling uh, own emotions, or it's a combination of two or uh, all the three factors. And um, most uh, most of the players they agree that it's basically the intuition, and of course confidence that you can trust intuition. Intuition is something that you can develop over uh, over the years. If you start to play and you're like a beginner, I don't think you have a really developed intuition. It comes also with your practice, you know, with your experience. And uh, the longer you play, and uh, then you have that you have gather all these all this information, all these practices, all this uh, experience, and then you can. I think then you can really rely into intuition. Um, like when they ask Adam what is uh, what is intuition uh, to him, he said like it's the first move that it comes to my mind. Um, the next player said that it's the inner balance because then he can make the best intuitive decision. And uh, intuition is also very important to avoiding time travel because he needs to he doesn't need to invest a lot of time and make a move that comes as first to his mind. It's uh, very similar as uh, Adam what he said. Uh, then it's like a mental and emotional problem. And if there is a player who, who have this, then he should handle it. Uh, it's, uh, first of all, you have to be able to deal with the pressure and you need to be tactically sharp. Okay, tactical is something that we can all train, you know, it's uh, the diagrams, uh, the studies, and uh, in, in comparison to intuition, that is something that it, I think it must be developed over the years. And this is the last one. It's very interesting. The, uh, where the grandmaster said that um, emotion plays an important role. One should try to be as objective as possible and not let the curse of the game influence you negatively. And this may be the most uh, important, difficult thing of them all. And I would definitely sign this sentence because we all know that uh, we have a game where we are pushing, we overplay the opponent, and something happens. Maybe because of the time, maybe because we calculate something wrongly and then the, the tables are turned you know we come to uh instead of being having the advantage we are on the other side and um to to accept this new new uh new uh new challenge or the new positions 
uh, I think it's very difficult because we are maybe still still uh, living like okay, why I called it? Okay, I had a good position and I was I was uh, about to win and and now I have to now I have to um, defend and uh, just to be objective and really like uh, change change the focus, change the mind. I think this is one of the uh, most difficult also part uh, of the game. Mm -hmm. I would definitely definitely sign this last sentence. Um, so we can move exactly to next questions, and um, this is about the critical uh, moments in game. Because uh, if we don't lose or if we don't win it within ten minutes in the game, we definitely come to some critical positions. Yeah, and um, how do strong own, strong grandmasters how they identify uh, this critical position, and how do they decide what time should be spent on it? Uh, a good player usually feels when the position is critical one. Uh, the, the other one is saying, for me, this is a position where either I have to calculate something very concrete or where there is no easy move. And critical moments are out of preparation, something unexpected happened, move 41. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, we are on the move 40, but something um, in our heads is, okay, let's, let's make this last move just to be sure on the shorter line that you know, we understand that we are not losing. And sometimes we are doing it too often instead of taking uh, the time and and it's it's the one uh, the move that's fall completely our position and position that um, requires either heavy calculation or important strategic decision if i can see this is also a good point if i can see that the position will be cleared up in the next moves i would invest more time and if the situation con continues to be complex then i make a faster decision uh, there is no universal clue, it's lifelong experience, and defining a key moment is crucial for the time management, as one should try to take a correct decision at the point of the, of the game. So we can see that even the strong grandmasters, uh, for them it's uh, not so easy to identify this, uh, this uh, critical position and how to handle it, how much time it should be. It should be spent, but there are some factors that uh, that that can help you, you know, by by the, the decision. If I if you should take the time or you should uh, move faster. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, this was the question that I was expecting, like uh, to confirm uh, my uh, my attitude during the game, but I was a little bit uh, wrong, I have to say, because. Uh, what I do is uh, when I play the game and my, it's my opponent's move, then I just sit and relax. And you know, we women uh, sometimes I think like, okay, why I take these uncomfortable shoes? Oh my God, these trousers that are not so comfortable. My skirt or dress is too short, and this kind of thought. And uh, I thought that always, I always thought that it's good, you know, to switch off during the game, just to be not to get too tired or to save the energy. And but. Um, is it is it a correct approach, or is it mean that the person stop being uh, mentally involved in the position? Mm -hmm. And well, uh, that is yeah. So uh, general advice is that if you are on the move, then you should calculate like uh, okay the tactical uh, possibilities, and if there is an opponent of the, on his time, you should discuss some general strategical uh, options. And um, yeah, it's a bad habit. It's good to stay alert and focus because lack of concentration can be very costly. And we know this, you know, sometimes we play a very good game and it's just short moment of the concentration failure and we, we lose the game, which is, is very, very cruel sport. So, uh, because just one move and it's all over. Switching mm -hmm. off for a short while is useful. And um, okay, one cannot avoid thinking about random things, but just limit it but it should be limited to a minimum. And uh, think generally, and in which uh, we, whose favor would be piece exchanges, queen exchanges, when entering the game, which pieces to keep and where on the board. And um, intensive thinking, when it's your open and move, is also a question of energy. And But your sh thoughts should stay basically with the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know what I was doing wrong, so I will, I'm, I have uh, started to work on this and uh, try to be more focused during the game instead of uh, 
flying with my thoughts uh, in all possible <laughs> directions. Yes. Let's go to the next question. So uh, we all we all know the players that are playing. Uh, we've been playing against the players who are playing uh, fast, let's say, and good. Yeah, those the players are that are very annoying. Yeah. Uh, I, I bet that most of the player prefers to play against players who are playing slow. So how should we adjust our game? How should we adjust our uh, thinking? To, to our, what should be our approach to these kind of players? So um, when your opponent is in time trouble and you have the advantage, do not try to use the time trouble and play as before. It's uh, from Boris Kulka, his book Lessons with the Grandmaster. It's, uh, Great, uh, great book. I would definitely recommend to read. Um, this is probably the, one of my favorite quotations from uh, all the answers. And uh, when the player said, "I tend to get quite irritated when my opponent plays very fast. What the hell? How he can play in three minutes such a complicated position? This guy has no respect for chess. I like the search for the best move, and I feel cheated when someone ignores this search. I also I feel more pressure when my opponent." plays fast. Uh, don't go for a single tactical line when your opponent is time trouble and uh, where he needs to defend just win one move and go for lines where he feels lack of time and make prophylactical moves. It's just like move like g3, h4, h5, a4. These moves don't basically change completely character of the positions and uh, they are in uh, your favor and uh, your opponent is expecting some tactics and these kind of moves are very unpleasant in uh, side mode. What is definitely true, because we are in the time travel, we are expecting some tactics, and you know, we are calculating, calculating, and sometimes this kind of, uh, this kind of answer is like this profit galactic moves, it's like, uh, you don't know from all of a sudden how to fast react, because you were expecting uh, a different, uh, different answer. So if you move to next slides, it's still about these uh, faster, faster at playing uh, opponents. So um, the next grandmaster is saying, um, I really get too impressed by the quick play because it signals lack of deep understanding. And okay, if the player plays slow, you also should uh, you should uh, take into account that uh, he's used to, and then the player gets very good concentration in the tight mode. Yeah, but uh, the players who have uh, problems with the time travel, I think this is a, uh, a very good, very good uh, place to uh, very good advice is. To work on it, and uh, I try to stay uh, true to my own time management. Mm -hmm. So uh, I ask if they follow any rule that uh, you should never use more than twenty minutes on move, and basically no is the most common answer. But okay, it's really not advisable to spend twenty more minutes on a move. Uh, one guy he said that uh, he spent once fifty minutes on move, and the opponent's uh, uh, move came as a surprise to him. So uh, we can move to another slide where is basically I sum up. Uh, what, uh, this was my last question, and it was like if they could give like three best advices for the players on time management. So I summarize it, and um, here we are. So have a string opening repertoire and play the opening fast. Uh, this is a. Um, I think this is a, also a little bit uh, side psychological uh, thing because uh, sh if we are well prepared, shall we play the opening fast or shall we pretend uh, pretend that we are not prepared and try to trick kind of uh, the opponent? And But okay, um, I'm of the opinion if you are well prepared, you should show it to your opponent. You should be, because it also gives you some kind of self-confidence. And, uh, and of course, you save the time. And uh, these five, seven minutes that you maybe you use to trick your opponents. You maybe you maybe need uh, later at some uh, moment of the game, and train your intuition and uh, trust yourself. Uh, this is a good point, and we always do it. We some we say like, okay, if I wouldn't be in the the time trouble, I would win the game. But it's not an excuse, yeah. And this is like because we are we are the master of our chess clock of our time, so. Uh, it's always up to us how we how we are managing uh, our time. And for the guy, for the, the Scrum Master, blundering one trouble is as bad as blunder with one hour on your clock. And it's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, try to define a good time management for yourself. And when you define it, then you can enforce it. Yeah. Uh, try to have a little bit more time than your opponent. It maybe can help a little bit psychologically. Uh, if you play, if you plan to play two moves and you don't know in which order you uh, start with the move, you will play no matter what. This is really good advice. I started to implement it as well in my games. Uh, if you have one legal move, then play it. Uh, uh, and uh, okay, don't think if you can, if you are in, uh, if you get check or you can uh, peace exchange. If there is one move, just play it and don't waste the time. Uh, Sometimes you have to find. Sometimes you have to find the courage to decide a move, you know, because at the end you have to play one move and uh, decide faster, even if you have to take a risk. And now uh, with the girls, because I've been training also some young talented uh, girls in Austria, and I always uh, often heard that uh, I was afraid. I, I didn't want. I was afraid to take a risk. I was afraid of this. I would lose. But you know, uh, uh, I really like the quotation of uh, Michael Jordan who. No, okay, it's very bad to lo- losing a game. I hate losing a game by myself. But uh, but uh, taking a risk also opens you uh, n- new new ways, you know, new new ways of thinking, and and it pays off. Uh, I'm of the opinion that it pays off at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. practicing tactics, blitz, it's good for the reflexes and quicker decision making. And uh, the last slide is. Don't be afraid to invest the time at the beginning. Uh, that's uh, also something. Uh, uh, if you are got, if you are uh, uh, your opening got you in the opening, just don't be afraid to invest your time. You know, because uh, it's very important. Yeah, and if you just play quickly some moves, you will get in some bad position. And if you invest a little bit of more time, you can you can come into solid solid position. And uh, at the end of the day, you both come out of opening and. Uh, uh, then the general knowledge of chess is uh, more important. Um, take your time before an exchange. And another good advice, if you're in time trouble, keep your pieces together, yeah? So like the movie The Queen from, let's say, H1 to A8 is probably mm-hmm. not very advisable mm-hmm. because you very uh, it can happen very easily that you overlook a movie. Uh, the, uh, these kind of moves that are very easy to overlook, these long, long moves. Yeah, and it also about... takes a lot of time to make such a long move. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> At least one yeah, more that's... second, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's very practical advice. <laughs> <laughs> so decide about your opening variations, what you are going to play. And this is also I started to implement because before I was like sometimes, um, I don't know if I'm going to play against the four uh, queens in the entire or in the... I was always like sometimes I simply said like, okay, I will decide. but. Um, Maybe, but I think this is really not a good approach because if you come to game and you know what you're playing, then it gives you some kind of self-confidence. You know, you are well prepared. Then you are all also more positively like with this, I don't know, you have played this, I don't know. So this kind of attitude also, I think, um, affects us a bit. So I changed this after this advice and uh, develop a habit to watch the clock. And uh, when you are serious, know when in which situations you spend most of the time, as we already that and it's very important to figure out when to spend your time and calculate and when to trust your uh, intuition. So this would be, uh, I also would, would like to point out that I made the presentation a little bit shorter for this mm-hmm. session. It, uh, actually, it's a bit longer, but I try to keep the most important uh, most important things, uh, points, advices in the, in, in the presentation. And I would like to end it with the last slide. It's actually uh, from the from my favorite uh, athlete, and it's from uh, Rafael Nadal, who once um, uh, he lost the game and the match, and uh, one sports journalist asked him, "Rafa, if you won, if you would be in the game and." You would be in the set, and then you would be in probably the match. And he said, like, if doesn't exist in sport, that's the real thing. If, if, if never comes, the thing is you have to do it. So work on your weaknesses, work on improving your time management, because uh, this is just a bad habit, right? And it is this, if, if, if never comes, the thing is you have to do it. It's, it's your chance. Uh, it's your moment at the 
chess board. So use use the chance. So this would be I would like to end this presentation with this beautiful quotation. That's really, really um interesting i will keep this in my mind to somehow remove word e from my vocabulary and exactly. my brain <laughs> exactly really and smart. you know and you know i started uh, not using this if also in my daily lives like we are searching for excuses especially we just so like to use you know and i stop because if if doesn't exist you have the chance it's your moment you know Mm -hmm. Stop searching for excuses and use the chance. Oh, that's brilliant. I sent out several mails yesterday with if words, so good lesson. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much, Regina, for pointing all these problems that all the chess players are uh, familiar with i'm sure many many of our viewers find themselves in in here and thank you for doing this research for for all the chess players because uh, <laughs> i think that it, no one done that before uh and uh, i'm sure i'm sure many of us will start to think now in a different way thank you very much uh i once again remind our viewers um if they have any questions um to this topic, time management, please let us know in our YouTube chat. And uh, I believe we have a video as well prepared. Ye yes, exactly. I just say uh, because it's uh, now we finished time management and we would like to start with the second topic. And it's about how to boost uh, female chess. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, Austria, it's not really typical the chess country, except, OK, Markus Rager, who is the strongest uh, German speaking uh, grandmaster nowadays. But um, when I changed my federation, uh, because I used to play for Slovakia, but I uh, changed it in 2014, I was very surprised to see the huge support, you know, for the women chess in Austria, although they didn't really have like a super strong female players. If you don't, if you don't consider Eva Moser, who unluckily passed away like two years ago, and she was super strong, belonging to the top players female players in the world, but they were doing so much for the girls and female to, to support them. And uh, uh, it was about one year ago uh, during this corona madness when we couldn't meet and we, we couldn't play chess. So uh, I got a meal from our former uh, trainer, coach, and uh, I didn't hesitate for a minute to, to join this initiative because I think, okay, uh, next to job and to kids, it's really not so easy to find out to play the tournament, like eight or 10 days. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, okay, maybe it's my turn to, I'm doing the coaching training uh, for, for the uh, Austrian talented girls. But I said, okay, maybe it's also an uh, interesting point to, to look at the chess, to support chess from the other perspective, not uh, from the chessboard. And um, I remember very well when we were holding the first uh, uh, meetings online we were so enthusiastic um, about uh, about what we are going to do you know and uh, we really started from the very beginning and we we created like the the mailing list with all the female players in Australia we contacted them for the tournament we started uh, creating uh, social media accounts the first webinars the first trainings free trainings for the girls and uh, more and we were so excited like what is about to come but you know, the first excitement is uh, always like kind of boost for you. But uh, the thing is, you, with the time, you have to also keep it. And just uh, with some negative things, don't let yourself to put off, you know, like to get disappointed and to tell yourself, okay, I, I don't want to make a father, you know. And I'm very happy. I'm very proud of the girls that um, we, we have done so much in this uh, one year. And we got so much uh, positive feedback, on, not only from the female, uh, from the Austrian female players, but also from other countries. And and uh, I I, w I wanted to show you the the things that we are doing, just because I'm quite sure there are plenty of girls out there uh, who would like to support the, the female chess uh, because it got much better in the last years. But I think there is still time for uh, space for improvement. And maybe these these girls they don't know how to start, or maybe they are afraid of failure. But we started also from the from the zero, and and uh, what kept us was the love for the game and the, the team spirit that we uh, supported each other, and we did it all. We all did it on our free time. So for me, it wasn't easy, like to have a job, uh, to have a kid, and to I was spending evenings with these 
be this initiative so so without any money and uh and uh but uh, when the first thing started and uh, we got so much positive feedback we were so happy and of course it it uh, it we wanted to uh, move on and uh, so um, th this is the reason uh, uh to, to show the the girls outside that okay uh, you can also start by yourself you don't need to you don't need to uh, have a huge support from the federation but i have to say i have a federation supported us uh, with a small budget uh, or uh, as you as you will later uh, we will later show on and uh, my colleague she she prepared Nikki she was supposed to be with us today but unfortunately she got sick and she prepared a very uh, very nice video we would like mm -hmm. to show you and uh, our motto is actually for a stronger female uh, chess community so if you can, you can play it uh, yes I can't wait to see this video let's have mm -hmm. it on the screen Receiving the mail of one girl's father who wrote that his daughter enjoyed the training sessions a lot, or to get an email from one female chess player who said that she's motivated again to work on her chess. These are like the moments when I know that it's the right thing uh, to promote women's chess in Austria. But of course, it's very difficult to handle all of the games in such a short time. It's like to be to have a fighting spirit always to not give up and yeah stuff like that because if I won a game I would probably I, I was very close to take the first place in this tournament. There was a beautiful video with uh, beautiful and smart girls in chess who are so active. I was I was quite surprised how active they are even in pandemic time, and this is truly inspiration for for many girls in over the world. So th thank you so much for sharing also this video with us. And now I think it's time to call Alexandra back and. Um, to ask her to share her presentation with us. Thank you, Katie. So, Alex, if you'd like to start with the, the presentation. Yeah, sure. All right. So let's have the slide on the screen and we can go ahead. Thank you. So our agenda today, I believe, will be um, social media. Then we'll talk a bit about our tournament. And then Regina will talk about the Women's Chess Congress and some other projects. So I will start with social media. Yep. 
Thank you. This is again our team, um, as you can see, um, as you saw in the video as well. Yes. Um, next slide, All right. please. Thank you. So, um, as always, our goals um, in women's chess and also in social media are to promote chess among active female players in Austria, to motivate girls and women to start and or to continue playing, better visibility of our projects and initiatives, and to connect the Austrian female chess community. And social media presence, of course, is very important for all of those things, especially for visibility and building a community because organizing the event is only half the job, but then you have to actually promote them and get people to attend and to participate um, in our events. And a big part of motivation as well is seeing role models. So um, the way to do that is, of course, social media. On the right side of the slide, you can see our logo, which also helps us to build our brand and our community. And we achieve those priorities that I just mentioned through proactive communication, firstly, for example, through our newsletter, which comes out three to four times a year via email and on social media, through our social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram and Twitch, and through Chess AT, which leads me to the next point of um, cooperation with the Austrian Chess Federation. So we post regularly on the Chess AT blog. For example, we write articles and post news and reports of our events. Next slide, please. Thank you. A big part of that is our social media contests. So we organize chess related contests on our channels, such as quizzes, creativity contests. We showcase tactics diagrams and the Frauenschach Out logo that you saw earlier also came about through a contest, actually, where participants submitted their designs. And then the winner, which you just saw, um, became our official logo. Oh, the and logo course, was the logo was presented from this young lady. Uh, no, this is, so this young lady is with the prizes. The logo was submitted by um, someone else, but we got lots and lots of submissions. Um, beautiful, like hand-drawn. This one was designed digitally, but we got some drawn ones. Um, we got all sorts of different designs. So it was, it was a really nice contest. Yeah, yeah very, this one very won. nice logo, I must say. Very nice, uh, yeah. beautiful logo. As you can see, it's everywhere on our social media channels or um, as the girl is holding the prizes, it's on all of our prizes and um, on all of our, um, when we organize something on the leaflets, we also have the logo. So, um, yeah, I just mentioned the prizes. We have cups and stuffed animals, which you can see on the picture, but also trainings, gift vouchers and so on. And we've received lots of engagements with these contests and very positive feedback from both the Austrian and the international chess community. So I suppose that the key takeaway from this is that interaction to our followers and um, along with a strong social media presence is really important to us because that is key to a successful women's chess movement, in our opinion. And I will now present some other more chess related projects. Thank you. So, for example, the online women's league is meant to give female hobby players a platform to play, practice and win prizes. It's played in rapid mode and participants are split into groups according to their strength and they play against each other. New pairings come out each four weeks and within those four weeks, participants are free to decide with their opponents when they want to play. And they can sign up um, at any time after the four week round or they can take breaks between each four week, four week round and then come back. So it's very flexible. And then the prizes, books and trainings are drawn randomly because this is a hobby league and um, having fun and practicing is really the key goal. And you can also see the hobby league logo on the right side. Yes. Next I slide, have a please. Question. Are you are you accepting some foreigners? <laughs> uh, yes. I would love to yeah. be part of this really fun uh, fun event for girls. We actually we have some German um, girls as well in, uh, and women as well in our hobby league. It's just a bit difficult with accepting other foreigners, first of all, because of the prizes, but also the participants have to talk to each other to set, mm -hmm. um, set the dates for the games. So I suppose it's easier when you speak German. <laughs> but yes, we do accept um, sign-ups from, um, interna from international um, chess players as well. Amazing. Let's go next to the next slide. slide. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course, we also organize and take part in regular chess tournaments. So, for example, we have blitz tournaments, which are carried out on Lee Chess, where we have a group with currently 72 female um, members. 
And we also usually have live streams with commentary during tournaments, as you saw in some of the video footage. And one example I would like to highlight is the Women's Day tournament, which we had on the 8th of March, um, where we had 117 participants from 15 countries, and 58% of them were women. And for that tournament, we also had an online pool for voluntary donations instead of a participation fee, which you would normally pay in a chess tournament. And this way, we also collected some money, which then helped us to organize other events for the future. And then, of course, we have some um, internet. We regularly take part in international tournaments. For example, we placed first in the European Chess Union's International Girls and Women's Team Battle ahead of 14 other countries. Next slide, please, Katie. Thank you. And last but not least, we offer lots of trainings for free. I already mentioned that we offer trainings as prizes for our contests and our tournaments, but we also have dedicated programs with members of the Austrian female national team. For example, we organized an online girls chess day in March, which, which had 20 participants and it consisted of a training um, in the first half of the day and a tournament in the second half. And then we also recently started a series of trainings in May which um, also has 18 participants, and it consists of quizzes, tactics, and game analysis, um, which is just meant to be fun and just train girls and give them an opportunity to improve their chess. And for example, the first session's theme was you did Polka, and again, there was a quiz on her, and then uh, some tactics were shown, and then some games were analyzed. And you can see some pictures of those events on the slides. I will hand back to Regina now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So, uh, being myself a former professional player, I know very well what that what it means to be on the top, all the sacrifice and denying oneself. But uh, it brings also a lot of happiness, personal satisfaction, success, and joy. And to motivate our uh, female players and to show them real uh, chess models of any age, I'm holding once a quarter a webinar called uh, "Strong Women in Chess." I have to say that I had a uh, short break because of the baby, but I'm now I'm back in July where I will be uh, holding a webinar with uh, Melanie Lube. In December, it was with uh, Stavrola and we had about 30 to 35 participants. I chose Stavrola just because she's uh, not just the best Greek uh, female player, but she's also uh, uh, young. And uh, I wanted to show the chess you don't need to necessarily be the, the uh, world champion, but chess can open to you a lot of doors, like Savrola, she is now studying in the US. So uh, this is another great opportunity uh, uh, that chess can bring uh, to you. And the idea is to introduce, to introduce uh, inspiring women who are engaged in chess, um, like three to four times uh, per year. And uh, chess players, organizers, trainers, enthusiasts, we started last year in summer. So it's about like half an hour we talk and then they show the best uh, chess moment. It's a uh, primary for the Austrian chess community because it's supported financially by all our Austrian chess federation. As um, <clears throat> we would like to also give some, uh, some money, some fee to the girls who are coming because they take time and prepare the, the material for uh, themselves and just to reward, give them a small reward. So you can move. Uh, so chess profiles of women national team. This was my idea. I always wanted to have like a nice and short like uh, biographies and not just to be like on some Excel table. And uh, I think it's very important to for the better visibility and the promotion of the women and to show them like uh, to show that uh, reveal a uh, true love of the games of the female players. I prepared these uh, these short biographies. For all our national players, we are currently like 14 girls. Thank you, Katie. So you can move uh, to another slide. So this was uh, Girls and Women Chess Congress uh, in Salzburg 2020. We were lucky because we, it was organized in September, shortly before it came another lockdown. It was in cooperation with uh, German uh, Chess Federation, female uh, uh, German Chess Youth and uh, Swiss Chess. Federation. And uh, basically, uh, what is the biggest challenge for most of the Federation nowadays is to convince the girls and women to be active and to keep playing chess in the sport that is so strongly uh, dominated by the men. Uh, therefore, uh, I think it is crucial and important to find out what 
what um, makes the girl and the woman interested in chess, what motivates them to keep playing, how, how Federation can uh, support them, and uh, what, what roles uh, uh, are playing like uh, chess role models, like the, the experienced girls, how can they be, how can they uh, uh, can be uh, activated in all these activities? How can uh, how can we uh, how can federation engage them, and not only on the um, national level, also on the international level? The aim of this the these three days three days uh, girl and woman chess congress was not only to discuss uh, the already mentioned topics, but also. Uh, uh, search for a possible mutual uh, co cooperation to share the best practice and to introduce successful chess projects running in these three German speaking countries and also uh, to connect on an uh, international level. There were about uh, 20 uh, sessions and workshops that were very interesting, very fruitful, and with a strong involvement of the participants. And just to mention a few, it was like uh, to sharing the best practice successful chess uh, female project in uh, Germany. Um, we had also a topic about uh, gender cap in uh, chess, uh, neuroscientific uh, consideration to uh, gender differences in chess, and uh, mental training was also a very interesting, uh, very interesting presentations. Uh, what is uh, how is it with the girls and women chess in Switzerland and uh, I presented at the end uh, performance-oriented uh, chess training uh, with the girls. So this would be Kathy. Uh, I would like to then end this uh, this uh, topic: how to boost female chess in Austria. And uh, I hope the girls that they were looking could find some uh, some motivation, inspiration to to start with some activity or maybe to continue with some activities because our aim is like to have a stronger chess community and uh, to support girls and female uh, to keep playing chess, to maybe come back to chess and to start playing chess. Oh, amazing. I'm really, really amazed uh, how strong is, is, is your team. Uh, I see that it's not to work only one person, but you actually have a very strong team who are working together side by side and this is really uh, really important nowadays uh, to to make a really big project and successful projects y yes exactly I have to say at the end and also um, we are lucky uh, to have really uh, support from our uh, federations who are for, for them who's important really also the female part of the chess not only the uh, the guy so and uh, I can really really appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Well, I kindly um, invite all the companies or um, sponsors if they are interested to boost uh, uh, ladies in, in Europe, in Austria, please contact, contact them and they are doing really awesome things. I'm really surprised and this is something <laughs> really amazing what I just uh, saw today uh, that we were not aware of. Of, of it yet, uh, but uh, as, as I see, you are very active in social media as, as well, and I'm w one of your new followers from today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Re Regina, for being here and brought us very important topic, time management. I see that is not an issue for girls in Austria. They are managing perfectly well <laughs> their time. <laughs> and I see we managed today. I Yes, it will do my time management because I was a little bit afraid we will we will need more time. And my husband said, "Okay, you are doing time management. You cannot, <laughs> you know, you have to be finished within one hour." So yes. happy we, we succeeded. Did <laughs> we did it. Uh, special uh, special thank you also to Alexandra who who brought so much information to us and. Uh, uh, also, she looks very enthusiastic of the work she's doing for, for chess. And thank you so much for both of you doing this for girls. Thank you very much, Katie, for having us and for having this uh, opportunity for me to present the time management because I spent so much time on the on this work that at the end I really hated it so many <laughs> evenings and also the possibility to present our activities and uh, in Austria. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, this is Queen's Festival, the, uh, the event, which is not only chess event, but we have very interesting seminars where we are learning all the experiences, uh, difficulties, um, issues that uh, girls in chess are having in many continents. So this was the uh, European session and stay turn. We will have n uh, in uh, next sessions, we have American continents and we will know more information about that. So I'll come back soon. Please, uh, please be here as well. Bye.